I'm going to take a quick minute and uh, have us code out the greatest common divisor function. So I think I mentioned this at some point, but there are certain algorithms you should just kind of know how to write. And you'll see these in coding interviews, or you'll be able to abstract them to other problems. Uh, the GCD is one of those. Um, it's the kind of thing, along with, say, FizzBuzz, that you'll see uh, you'll have to whiteboard at some point. It's just pretty common. So we have it as an example in the current learn materials, and I'm just going to take us through coding it. So uh, the greatest common divisor of a number, first off, um, you know, uh, of two numbers, that is. So you have a num1, uh, and why don't we just set these? So we'll do a num1, and we'll set that to I don't know, um, 64, and we'll set num2 to 32. And uh, you probably can think offhand what this greatest common divisor would be. What evenly divides both of these numbers? What's the largest number that divides both of them? Well, it's 32. Pretty straightforward. Um, now, if we made this 24, what would it be then? Let's find out. So def gcd, greatest common divisor, right? And we're going to throw num1 in there, and we'll throw num2 in there. And why don't we, we're going to approach this with a while loop. Now, to be, to be quite honest, you don't need to use a while loop here, but it's the kind of problem that you might not know offhand how to write with a for loop. So we'll just go ahead with a while loop because it feels, it has that feeling of being more open-ended than it actually is. But we'll, we'll go ahead and do this with a while loop. So uh, while, um, while one of these numbers, let's say num2, does not equal 0. So as long as num2 doesn't equal 0. And what does that mean? That means that we're going to decrement num2 in some way. Um, now, we want to decrement it sort of in an intelligent way. So we're not just going to, we, we can't just subtract from it, uh, just easily subtract from it. Um, what I'm going to do is say, well, let's make a copy of num1. Sorry, let's make a copy of num2 and replace num1 with num2. So we're going to do that. Now let's modify num2. So we've modified num1. Let's modify num2. And num2 is going to get the uh, modulus of num1 by num2. And we can walk through this, right? And, and let's do that in a second, sort of by hand. Um, so we can go ahead and return num1 and uh, you know I, I'm not I haven't explained this very very uh, completely but we can walk through a couple of these numbers and get a sense of this so let's print the GCD of this outer num1 right and num2 and you know we're not going to get a name collision just uh, pointing this out this is outside the function. These are parameters within the function. I tend to name things the same thing a little bit, maybe too much. Uh, so let's just change these to n1 and n2 just to be resoundingly clear that these are not the same as what's in the function. OK, we're just passing them in. So uh, the greatest common divisor of 64 and 24, sorry, is 24. Let's just verify that, that that makes sense. So over here, I'm just going to say, um, well, can we evenly divide 64 by 24? We can't. So there's something, something's going on here. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong here. Now, this is a subtle Hmm. It's not so much a subtle error. Let me let me just be 
quite honest. I need a temp in here. So um, we'll call this temp temporary one. And that's going to get num1. And instead of, because uh, we want the old value of num1, right? So let's let's run this again. Let's go ahead and run that. Eight. Now that's what I expected to see. Temp1 gets num1. Num1 gets num2. We've overwritten num1, but we wanted to use the old num1. That's why we've got temp1 modulo num2 here to go into num2. Um, there's another way that you can write this. Uh, the syntax we use in our example, I'm just going to go ahead and comment this out. And I'm just going to say num1 uh, and num2. And we're going to do a multiple assignment here. And this is one of the nice things about multiple assignment is that num1 at this point is the old num1. And we can, uh, we can assume that num1 has not been altered here, even though we've replaced it here, because this is kind of the old values of these. And this is the new value. So num2 goes into num1, and the result of the old num1 modulo, modulo num2 goes into num2. So this is equivalent, and you know just to verify that, run this again, and we get 8. So that's kind of nicer code. Um, but if you really want to see what's happening there, it's, it's kind of like we have a, an implicit temp variable in there. So why don't we break this down um, with this 64 and 24? And I'll just do this in, you know, just do this in this code editor. I'll move all my code down so that we can understand this algorithm a little bit clearer. So num2, while it's not 0, um, num1 is going to get num2. So in this case, uh, n1 is going to get 24, and n2 is going to get, so this is on our first pass of, so this is pass 1 of the while loop, and n2 is going to get num1 modulo num2, which is uh, 64 modulo 24, and just to, I'll just put this in IPython, so 64 modulo 24, we get a result of 16. So n2 is now 16. n2 is still greater, or is still not equal to 0. Um, so let's take another pass. Let's take another pass here. And uh, in our second pass, we're going to do the same thing, right? We're going to say, well, n1 is going to get 16. And n2 is going to get 24 modulo 16. So 24 modulo 16 is 8. And now we're going to do something kind of nice. We're going to see on our third pass that we get to where we want to be. So on pass 3, n1 is going to get, it's still going to get 8. But now n2 is going to get 16 modulo 8. 8 goes into 16 evenly, so n2 gets 0. Cool, huh? So we're going to break out of our loop uh, while num2 doesn't equal 0. We're going to break out. And that's kind of nice, or it's very nice, right? Um, and then n1 gets returned. And that is our greatest common divisor. So let's just throw a different couple numbers in here. I'm just going to put them in directly. So let's do uh, 131 and, oh gosh, what, uh, 87? Let's see how that does. And our greatest common divisor there is 1, which makes sense, right? Uh, there isn't a common divisor aside from one between these two numbers, but um, you know one will always be your will always be a common divisor, so that's what our function should return, and we get this nice little we get this nice little uh, one liner in here 
that makes for a clean little function. In the example on learn, the current example on learn, uh, I throw a counter in there for to, you know, just to count the number of iterations that it takes to arrive at a result. And what you'd expect in this case uh, with this 131 modulo 87 and then 87, um, yeah, we're, we're going to see more iterations potentially. And one of the fun things that you could try with this is try to find two numbers in uh, kind of a, a number matrix that yield the largest number of iterations according to this algorithm. Something to think about. Uh, it's kind of a fun problem. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll throw up some code at some point demonstrating that. Uh, yeah, just getting you thinking.